Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers. This is Jerry Diamond with How to Get Out of Babylon. And this is an update of what I've been doing the last month, or better, since my last main video on, um, titled Ding Dong the Goats Are Gone. Okay. I was playing Shepherd for the good part of a year. And I was kind of thrilled that they were gone, but, you know, it was taking a lot of time. And I'll just recount real quick. Uh, Sarah Groves, a Christian musician, has a song called um, The Cave of Adullam. And I kind of um, wanted to have a sign, you know, Cave of Adullam put on my trailer. But anyway, she asked a question in that song, you know, because David's on the run, he's hiding out in a cave, and how does a shepherd become a king? You know, remind me, remind me of what the anointing all is for. You know, what am I doing here in the Cave of Adullam, you know? How does a shepherd become a king, you know? In other words, how, how, do, you, how do you go from being nobody, the youngest little pipsqueak of a kid to king of Israel. So anyway, in that video, if you remember, I was like feeling like worthless, useless, uh, the game's on, I'm sitting on the sidelines, there's a war raging, you know, the game's on the line, there's a war going on and I'm just not doing anything. I was feeling down. So anyway, well, I'd be finished. Step number one, how to become a king. <laughs> how does a shepherd become a king? Is be a shepherd. <laughs> so I just did that. So anyway, because of a, I'm not going to go into the whole story. It's just, um, you can't make this stuff up. Uh, anyway, someone, a sister posted a Facebook thing about a bear problem. And I thought it was just a Facebook meme. No, the bear the next night had been on the porch for eight hours. So the words went through my mind immediately when I realized this was not a joke. Is there not a cause? Okay, I haven't sat under, you know, preaching in a church for quite a while. I haven't heard uh, that's the story. The next thing that went through my mind was, is that, was that Gideon or who, who said that? Little David said that before Saul and his brother. So, is there not a cause? And to Saul, he said, yeah, I was watching my dad's sheep and uh, your servant David was watching his father's sheep. Didn't, didn't say he owned him, he was just a nobody. Yeah, he came there to deliver sack lunches to the brothers, you know. So anyway, a bear came and I slew it. A lion came and I slew it. So uh, here I am, you know, going to the back country of Arkansas to help with a bear and teach. It was something that I have felt for since 2009, the very first um, refuge meeting I went to, uh, Goshen meeting, I've been to two, three refuge meetings and then. Um, one titled Kingdom Community, and then one titled um, First International Goshen Builders Conference. So I've been to quite a few of these meetings. The very first one I came out with uh, the very strong feeling that someday I was going to have to go mobile and get onto these places and help people and teach them how to do stuff. So that's what's been happening. And all these years, especially since 2015, when my you know, partner took my business and and uh, because of that, you know, one of the excuses, whatever, you know, was uh, like, you know, went through the divorce. So I've been kind of pretty much homeless, moving from place to place, you know, having to pack things in the van, move, pack things in the van, move, pack things in the van, move, pack things in the van, move. And it was getting pretty tiring. That was another thing that was weighing on me. This last winter I spent, and I re didn't realize it till the end of winter, I counted two, four, six, eight, 12, 10, 12, 12 square feet of living space. 
So, you know, get out of bed, take things off the chair, put them on the bed, put the, pick the chair up, put it on the bed, take stuff out from in front of the door, you know, just to get out. Anyway, not complaining, just explaining, as my friend John says. <laughs> so, but mobility has always been on my heart, and, and I've been constantly having to do that. So, get on to something else here just for something to look at in there. I'll come back to this, I guess. Yeah, that's a nice one. Boston Mountains. That's not exactly where I'm at, but pretty darn. Yeah, that's about where I'm at there. Where you see Harrison there. Just below Harrison. Wow. Okay, so back to my um, little saga and bunny trail and everything else. So the um, idea... Am I on? Oh, man. Yeah, okay. It's up there in the orange and I can't quite see it. Uh, you know, I don't know how much time I've got. I think I'm on an SD card. I don't know. I don't want to blow this up and waste my time. So, all right. So, suddenly I'm in the back country of uh, almost to the very southern extreme of the circle that I drew, which is interesting. Newton County, the black circle, um, comes uh, right there at the bottom there you can see Ding. Newton County there and that's where the bear issue was um, at present I'm in Searcy County yeah right there next to Newton County so once upon a time I don't know how many years ago one day, I was led to, I felt to say to my oldest son, Ian, that when you see me strap on the 45, you'll know the shit has hit the fan. I go down to bear country, and it's like, maybe nothing would ever happen, but there was a bear, for a fact, eight hours, and so... I was packing my 45, two spare mags, and headlight, and I even got to the point where it was, Stephen mentioned this needs to get attached somehow because every time I take the hat off, right about the time I've got it here, I remember the lights on it, <coughs> hits, slams and hits the floor, but at least I got the uh, idea that we went on a six hour hike one day and ear protectors, and so those are permanently an attachment on the hat. This is kind of my summer hat because it's, the brim is wider and whatnot. So the headlight, I need to come up with. Uh, it's rechargeable. Love it. Fox Ellie. I've dropped it about a hundred times now. So, got it on Amazon. And for anybody that complains about my LED light advertisements, deal with it. Get them. As many times as I've talked about this, I cannot tell you in the last month how many times I forgot. Went out in the morning, didn't get back till after night, dark, no flashlight or no headlight. Very irritating. You cannot hold something in one hand, hold a flashlight in one hand and do something with your other hand. It don't work. Not if your life's on the line. Another thing is, uh, one thing that was just an awesome blessing was I had a ski pole, which makes a really good walking stick. I fell full force on that thing, and it flexed a lot, but it didn't break, and it kept, my, kept me from going down a very steep hill. And the other thing is, <laughs> these are um, zip ties, reuse, reusable. You can open them, seal them, so I just keep four of them on there. And with that and a decent knife, this is a cold steel trail master. Zip, 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 zip. With any kind of stick, like a hickory staff or something, a walking stick. And you've got yourself a good spear. You know, tie a rope on the end so you just 
sit with it laying like this. Something charges a bear and you flip it up. This is like the stick and the knife in itself. Boom. Pull it from this end up. You got a spear and it runs onto it and rams into it at the full force. So, you know, it's not the best knife in the world, but it's cold steel. Cold steel makes it very good stuff. Buy the best, forget the rest. Buy once, buy right, never have to buy again. All right, so. So it came time to, I mean, I'm too backbreaking, you know, I mean, really every time working hard. Uh, came time to go back and uh, I didn't feel like going back. So I pulled into Harrison, made a phone call. A friend said, yeah, you can go stay in our church. Door should be open. It wasn't. Slept in the van for about two hours. They got there at six and uh, slept on the concrete floor. Recovered enough to go visit one of my subscribers who supported me, uh, one of my supporters from back when. Turned out they were in a pretty good situation. It was good, beautiful scenery. Oh my word, beautiful scenery. I I'm gonna have to recap. I just can't, I can't even begin to re, re, uh, cap everything. I was trying to keep a log, a journal of what day by day everything that was going on. But um, anyway, one thing that is very true, and then and I went from there to meet with John and Batia Holmes of the Ozark Hebrew Heritage Alliance. Spent the night there, had Sabbath there. Um, that night didn't feel like going back home, home, whatever. Um, back to Missouri called a pastor that we had met at a fair, a uh, Pentecostal pastor, and he came and, you know, took me out to dinner and, well, Burger King, you know, <laughs> hallelujah, and um, got me a motel room. Went to church in the morning, and uh, anyway, I'm just not trying to recap everything because I cannot even begin to, so anyway, Long story short, and then I didn't feel like going home again. Third time, uh, I ended up uh, with uh, Stephen, and as it turns out, there's a mobile home here that's empty, and they kind of do, once in a while, they do meetings here, Sabbath meetings or whatever, people visit, so I'm the visitor. I'm the stranger. And so, for the first time since I got the van, it's empty. It's empty and vacuumed and clean, and I'm going on another expedition. I have until tomorrow to come up with some funding for this expedition. It's going to be a doctor's visit to uh, a Chinese health practitioner for someone who's really hurting bad, uh, a very awesome teacher, and then to um, a conference and for me get back home to, back home, whatever, to load up another load and get back. So, all right. Um, one of the first things I noticed, I did not expect to, uh, the way I was feeling when I left Missouri was, I told Shirley, last thing I said was, I may die, I may not be back, because off grid, no shower, um, steep hills, bears, you know, I, I said, I, I may not make it, I may not survive. I got down here to Arkansas, listen to me, I got down here to Arkansas, and, you know, Corey Ten Boom has this uh, supposedly a uh, vision of um, the northwest corner of Arkansas. I've got it in here. Uh, yeah, there. About 12 counties there. But it, the Ozark Plateau being surrounded, a circular region, mostly in Missouri, surrounded by angels with flaming swords, surrounded by a wall of fire. Inside, I say this in my 11-minute interview with Pastor Joe Fox at his High Prairie Acres Ranch Farm in Kansas. Um, I was going, you know, inside, you know, this, I'm describing the vision, supposedly, allegedly. You know, everything's green, the cattle, goats are grazing, children are playing outside, everything's devastation, chaos, anarchy, pestilence, war, famine, you know, disease. And Pastor Joe says, inside good, outside bad. I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> Make it simple. Um, so that's, I expected 
not not to make it because I wasn't feeling too good. At, you know, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, none of it. I was not doing good. I come down here and steep hills that back there I would have, I was, you know, I'd trudge up a hill and then feel like blacking out. You know, down here twi twice the altitude, two thousand feet. I'm wow, this is fun. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. You know, working. You know, it life is real. That's what I'm trying to get across. Um, felt great, having fun, exploring, you know, hiking, uh, just feeling like a kid again, feeling, you know, re almost reborn. And part of that, a huge part of that was almost immediately I would start singing hymns and songs that, um, I mean, from 1973, uh, when I was first became a believer and thereafter, uh, Redeemer Temple and where, where we got married, you know, um, songs and hymns and spiritual songs and psalms and just, um, just singing like praising nonstop. So uh, there really is a difference, you know, the air, there's real clouds here today. There's such beautiful clouds. I haven't, I don't remember seeing clouds like these ever. I mean, normal clouds in the sky. There's a lot more air movement, vertical, up and down, and uh, fresh breezes, and uh, just totally different, totally different. I mean, I, I'll be honest, and I don't mean anything against anybody in Missouri, but I mean, I was up hiking one day, and I just screamed out of the top of my lungs, I hate Missouri, it was killing me, you know. Understand, I'm from Colorado, okay, so cold weather, mountains are just, you know, Second nature. I mean, I love it. So, people here are like, it's cold. I'm like, you know, I'm in cut off sleeve, you know, no sleeve at all. So, um, so that that's kind of a quick recap, and I, I need to shut this off and get it, get, maybe do another one. But, um, in my estimation, somehow, spiritually, uh, forces have been released. I got verification of the idea that the shit has hit the fan. Uh, a couple called from California. We talked for quite a while. They said, we have to get out of here. People are killing people just to kill them. They're not robbing. They're not raping. They're not, you know, stealing anything. They're not, um, it's not vendettas. They're just killing people. They're running, it's happening more and more around the country. Okay, so this is not good. Uh, this is the beginning of what will someday be millions of people doing this. I see the future, chapter four, look up my video um, from the book, There Is No Death. Everything in that chapter I agree with. There's nothing in that chapter I disagreed with. And the thing that she said killed more people than anybody else, including nuclear war, um, Ebola, blah, 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 you know, a blistering plague, a massive earthquake was hordes of people coming out of the cities and killing just to kill. And when they came to the cities of light, places where people had been praying, she saw people who had gathered together. They knew something bad was going to happen. They prepared ahead of time. They had leadership. They were organized. They had food. And they were willing to share that food. And when these zombie hordes came, they went around them because they had protection. And she said the Lord was with them. Okay, so... Get that through your head. All right. Those who are selfish, those who are prepare, preppers and survivalists and planning on shoot first, ask questions later, us for no more, should we feed them or should we eat them, are not going to be protected by the Spirit. Those people who are praying and living unselfishly will be protected. All right. So, um... Let me, I need to just, let me finish up here. Um, where is my, probably where I should have started. Okay, yeah, there we go. All right. Patreon, hallelujah. I finally got help launching my Patreon page. I will be uploading videos from the last month. Well, since Passover. Well, since Passover, my life launched into a new phase more later because the, re the reason 
I've not uploaded videos is partly due to lack of signal, being in the back country of Arkansas, but also because I barely had time to catch my breath and keep my head from spinning because things have been happening so fast. We're going into hyperdrive. We're going into uh, hitting the nitrous. I have videos which can only be unlisted and I will share with supporters as I have liberty to do so. This is most assuredly a case of not throwing pearls before swine. I'm going to be on Patreon. My brother Stephen has been helping me a great deal and it's going to it's going to fly here before long. We're going to do a launch, but I'm going to send out a thing tonight because right now I need some funding for this expedition coming up. Okay, I've been helping people and I'm tapped out. Those of you who have helped me financially have a special place in my life in this ever-unfolding saga, my 1,000 Bunny Trail story. I'm going to call it the never-ending Bunny Trail story. So long story short, is that possible for me? Uh, probably not. I have great signal where I am. It is my Ozark Plateau Remnant Relocation Headquarters, at least for the time being. I have an empty mobile home to sort through the gear, food, etc. from my heavily overloaded van, emptied out for the first time. Well, not since my divorce, since I got the van. It was shortly after the divorce, sometime after the divorce, but, you know, since I got it. Without further ado, here's my Patreon launch page, completed with the help of dear brother Stephen. <clears throat> Though, thank you all who have helped in any way over the years to keep me alive, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, and you know who you are. The tide is finally turning. Judgment is at the door. Insofar as my life is concerned, think the canary in the coal mine. The shit has already hit the fan drive now or walk later. And the reason that I came down here to Arkansas was because of those five words. Because this sister had most of her families in Texas and was looking at Ava, Missouri to buy land. And those five words that she went, oh my, if my children end up having to walk here, I need to be as close to them as possible. Boom. Here I am because of those five words, drive now or walk later. I will say this, judgments are being brought to pass by a stumbling blocks. If you are remnant, you may be one of those stumbling blocks who will be a stone of stumbling, which will be the last warning before your nemesis is taken from this world. Pray for those who hate you and despitefully use you. You may well be the last witness they have before they are removed from this plane of existence this majestic realm which we call earth. <clears throat> if you are a widow, rest assured that your cries have been heard in the courts of heaven by the Yah of Sabaoth, and your remedy, your coverture is nigh. Those who seek to persecute you will soon be removed. A link is below for Psalm 94, the sons of Korah. It is about widows, orphans, strangers being most especially favored by Yah. My sense is that he is using especially widows to bring his plans for judgment forth upon this earth. Certainly this is true within the confines, the borders of the Ozark Plateau. And boy, do I mean that. I cannot, I talked to Stephen one night and I was like, I wonder if there's a circle. You know, if I start, if I mapped out all the widows that I know of, just I know of, on land, grandmothers, grandmothers out working on their own with no help from their children, very little help from their children, to make a place for their family. It is mind-boggling. If you're able to join Patreon, it would be a great encouragement to me for you to become a regular supporter. I have been on the road now for th four weeks, and any financial help would be greatly would greatly enhance my ability to bless other people and get videos uploaded. I have so many topics to cover, books to read, DIY projects to build. Thank you again, Jerry Diamond, Proenetes, Imperium. Explain that later. Um... Yeah, DIY projects, the log splitter will be a massive boon to everybody here in the Ozarks because you're going to have to have firewood to burn and, you know, campfires and everything, watchtower fires. So, all right. Um, so I want to go just cover the four tiers on Patreon. They have tiers, and Stevens helped me with this, so here we go. Patreon is a support basis for people who do, you know, work, art, or whatever it is. In my case, I read books, 
I digest information, I make it available. I have been doing that for 20 years, totally free of charge. And I was at this fair in this past, uh, went up to this pastor and basically fell apart, you know, and he said, let me come back here. And I said, well, put me in front of a chair in case I have to sit down or fall down. So he prayed and I, and I two, two things came out. I said, it's over, I'm done. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm finished, okay? Meaning, I need help. I am not going to continue without help of some sort, okay? I need some help. Um, it's over, meaning in this phase of my life is over. I mean, I have been, you know, carrying a burden for way too long. Geese, when they're on a flying formation, a bee, wedge formation, a bee formation, the lead geese cha lose changes out every once in a while because it's tiring being a leader. And I'm tired, period, flat, tired. And it ain't going on anymore. So anyway, um, so Runner's Hand Car Company. And that's a picture from the uh, uh, Hand Car Company, the Martin Hand Car Company, uh, Mormon thing that you can see the little carts there. Anyway, some will be runners, literally from Deacon, who will help their own so they can help others. They will drive if they can, but will walk if they must drive now or walk later. You know, three bucks a month, you can hear me read and stuff. I'll probably read a book when I get going. I'll probably read a book the first two or three chapters and then, you know, say if you want to listen to the rest of it, three bucks. Okay, watchmen, watchtowers on the ramparts. Some will be watchmen who will build watchtowers on the ramparts for communications and search and rescue. Oh, that's good. He already got it in. Ah. They will guide and warn others and man the watchfires of a thousand circling camps. More on that later. Healers, houses of healing. Some will be healers who will build houses of healing. They will anoint with oil and pray and bind up wounds and help heal the brokenhearted. And then cities of refuge. Some will be captains who will build cities of refuge. They will house and protect the lost and the weary and the widows and the orphans, strangers and priests. Okay, that's the four things. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I, I have, I have a, a lot of other screenshots I kind of wanted to cover, but it is late. I am tired. I have one day to get this whole expedition put together. Um, yeah, come up with some military thing like Operation whatever, you know, but uh, Operation Widows and Orphans and Strangers and Priests, you know, and that's what's involved here. Um, yes. Is it just absolutely, uh, I, no way could any of anybody have put this whole thing together other than the great most high Yah in heaven. So, hallelujah, um, fascinating stuff. Uh, so I'm, I'm just saying, putting out a plea, you know, uh, PayPal is dmnds2001, it's my email. A lot of you have that already. DMNDS2001 at yahoo.com. Uh, Walmart, Walmart to Walmart would probably be uh, at some point uh, in the next day or two. I've, I need some funding, so um, just I've spent everything I've had that I that I, I get, you know, I'm on Social Security and it's gone. You know, I've, I've been helping people, so not not complaining, just explaining. I mean, it's, but I, but to keep going. I need some a little bit of backing, some help, so I'm just asking for that. So thank you very much. This is Jerry Diamond. If you're listening to this, you are the remnant. All right. Thank you. Bye bye.